Come on, who doesn't like maps? Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about maps because, uh, yeah, I like maps. And uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about maps uh, for Kate Elliott's Chronostars series. Now, this is a series that we don't get like a really big detailed map until the, the two last books or when it's finally updated. But even then, it's hard to find a lot of, of maps uh, about this series. It's just one that I think has not ever really gotten a ton of attention. And so it's difficult to even find uh, maps specifically for the series. And so I kind of wanted to talk about it and talk about the geography because of the things that are a bit unique and or not unique uh, about the series in some fun ways uh, as well. So we're going to be taking a look at some maps I'll put on screen as, as we're talking through. Uh, the first of which are from the books I actually could not find online, so I, I had to take some pictures, so they're, they're probably not the best. Uh, and um, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to think that Katie Lee will be okay with me posting pictures of the map uh, for my video because I'm, I am I love this series and um, <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna hope that's okay but uh, with looking at this uh, and the, the first map that I'll put up here is uh, the map that is in the first five books and this is uh, it's not the easiest to see but this is Wendar and Var which is the the, the two regions that we're spending most of the time uh, there are a lot of references though to other places here and so what I'll note is while I will be showing more detailed maps uh, this is going to be completely spoiler free. It, you'll just be able to see uh, where some places are. But even as early as book one, a lot of these places are referenced. Uh, you just, for whatever reason, the map wasn't updated. So here we can see Wendar and Var and see a lot of the places where the, the story starts out, including Heart's Rest uh, and Ozna, the village here and some other bits, Ghent, uh, which is really important early on as well. Uh, and we just are mostly seeing this area and then like uh, some other places uh, that are mentioned, including the different uh, principalities here with it. And uh, you may or may not know with Crown of Stars, something that's uh, interesting here, uh, is it is set up to basically be an alternate Europe. Uh, and so uh, all of the, the countries and places here really are, they have an analog to uh, what our, our real world is. And that's not immediately uh, visible here, although once you start looking at the, the bigger maps, you can see it a little bit more as well. So I'm going to put up another one here, which is... Uh, the same setup uh, as what we just looked at, but it's annotated and colored in a little bit more to make it a bit easier to see here uh, with the, the white space here is being um, water here. But So this one shows a little bit more, but it's still the same uh, base map essentially that we are we're looking at with a little bit more showing. And, and kind of gives you a little bit more perspective that, you know, Wendar and Var are not really necessarily huge here uh, with it. But then... Uh, what you end up getting in the later books, and this is going to be in two halves uh, here because it's that's the way it is for the book. And uh, like I said, I could not find um, a, a, a easier way to see this. But here's a, a much uh, more annotated ones in the first half here. You'll notice the, the orientation very different. And uh, the second half here uh, with the, the same orientation uh, as well here. Uh, and so this this brings us to seeing that when you have it on its side, uh, and finally, what I'm going to put up here is a, a map from Atlas of Ice and Fire, uh, which is great map making there, uh, and so I was really happy that, um, I, I assume this is Wirt Head who did this, because he usually is the one doing the maps, uh, his site here, uh, and um, it's, a really, it's a really good map, actually. So we're going to pull that one up here, uh, and this is one that he's created, so I will... Of course, uh, I'll link out to the site here as well. The other ones, like I said, are pictures from the book and or just uh, the one I did find online. But this is kind of a zoomed out view uh, with, once again, the, the orientation of kind of regular Europe and it allows you to really see, once again, the, the scale that we have here because uh, this is, once again, specifically Europe. Uh, it's just kind of alternate, and that's where you get sort of the historical fiction feel in some parts of this uh, with really seeing. And when you see the orientation, you can actually see uh, that, oh, yes, this is a map of Europe, but uh, we have some big changes here. And so Wendar and Var uh, correspond to Wendar being Germany, uh, Var being the Low Countries, uh, which is uh, Belgium and the Netherlands, um, and I'm forgetting one. Uh, Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg. That's where there we are. Uh, 
uh, that we go for there. And then you'll see too, like you have Alba, which is Britain, Salia, with, which is France, and you'll see too some, you know, in the narrative, some of the things that are salient are, are said in more of a French way. Eicheland is Norway and Sweden up there, uh, Polini being Poland, uh, and then some other places that are, are mentioned uh, early on, but you might not have specifically seen, Austria being Austria, uh, somewhere close, Hungria being Hungary. Um, and then you have some other places, uh, like the, the steppe tribes, uh, the Kuman, who uh, are the, the Tartars or the Golden Horde. So other bits that you can look there as well. Uh, you, you specifically have Hesse merchants mentioned, which are, are reminiscent of Jewish traders uh, as well. And so you've got some other uh, really specific places uh, there as well. One that's mentioned uh, a lot too is Jinnah, which is uh, equivalent to Persia. Uh, and then the big one, of course, is um, Dar, which is Rome. Uh, and uh, that's pretty specific too, because we, we talk about the Holy uh, Darian Empire, which is the Holy Roman Empire, uh, very specifically. And there are a lot of references uh, to events that are happening in that time, and that's the uh, historical parallels that we are, are looking at as well. And so it's interesting to see uh, the, the different version of the map. But of course, and you might notice as well in a couple of the maps that I showed, uh, they're specifically labeled as Novaria, which is the name of the continent um, in, in this world, after the, the cataclysm. And we've not really gotten a whole lot into that. So I'm not going to tell you what that is, but there's a little like, ooh, what's that? Uh, because there was at some point a cataclysm, and you'll find out more about that as you continue as well. But I think it's really interesting to take a look here uh, specifically, and it just gives you a little bit of an idea of the scale here uh, as well. And that's something that I think that these books do really well is because they have that little bit of historical fiction feel. Uh, the, the scale, like how many people you can get, how quickly you can travel, uh, I feel like it's, it's, it's a lot more realistic than some. And you're not looking at huge, huge armies. You know, in the first book I've commented before in videos, you know, the really big battle is between like 800 people because that's, you know, that, that's the armies that could be gathered. It's not like a ton of people. And so it is, um, it's, it's just interesting to see. And I, I think it's interesting to look here as well. Uh, and for me, I, I like these elements because once again, there's definitely some historical fiction feel here, uh, except that you, you very much are specifically, uh, like there, there are changes. Uh, the, the biggest one being, of course, that Ica land uh, is home of the Ica, who are very much non-human uh, and are, are quite different. Uh, but you'll, you'll see all these other places and uh, some of the descriptions here, but then there's also uh, very much some differences, uh, of course, between uh, what we have going on here. Uh, the map is not entirely the same, and um, that's, once again, very intentional because there are... Um, there are some, some big differences as well uh, with the way that it's done. And it's written uh, very much in the, uh, the Middle Ages as well. And so that's kind of where we get things described. So I wanted to take a look here because once again, there are, there's a lot here with the, uh, the geography, the religion, uh, historical events that very much is based on real history. And that's too, I mean, if you look at the, uh, the very beginning of the first book, even in the acknowledgments, specifically talks about some of the inspirations and places that uh, she researched and got information for this. So it's very much intentional. Uh, but I think for me, it actually makes it even more interesting. And there are a lot of things too that I am I'm by no means a, a scholar of history. So there are a lot of things that I, uh, I'm sure I haven't noticed. And even with going through this, uh, this buddy read, uh, Liam from uh, Liam's Lyceum, he pointed out a couple of, of very specific things that I, I wouldn't have known or thought about that was really interesting as well. And just some, some additional parallels. So, but it's something that you can dig into not only the world building, and there's so much world building done in this series. Even though it's starting with something very familiar, there is so much uh, that's unique and different and that's very high fantasy, uh, despite the fact that we are starting in a, a familiar world, so to speak. But also it's the fact that the both the fantastical and the mundane have such a, a realism and uh, she manages to make the world feel very lived in and very unique, despite the fact that it's based on our world. But it also gives you a frame of reference, I think, as well, which uh, for this story, having it feel very grounded in our reality uh, makes some of the fantastical elements seem all that much more fantastical. And so it's something I think that works uh, really, really well. And so kind of wanted to, to talk about that a little bit. Like I said, I didn't go over um, all of the different places, but you can see on the different maps here. Like I said, I will link to uh, the, the big map that was uh, from Atlas of Ice and Fire because uh, I love that map. I was really happy when I originally found that just because it, it kind of shows the, the whole view and um, even though, like I said, it's, you, you can look and knowing where places are. Some of them, it's pretty obvious, some um, not as much, but um, being able to kind of see the whole thing and have it mapped out, I think is, is 
pretty awesome. So I quite enjoyed it. So that's all I have for this one. Just kind of want to take a look at the maps. Like I said, I, I really enjoy maps and uh, looking at the parallels here, I think are fun. And also uh, for those that are, are watching this, who have not uh, read the series yet, or are, are still in the early books too, I think kind of seeing the perspective, uh, I think if anything, just makes it even more enjoyable. Uh, at least for me, kind of seeing uh, all of the, these different looks uh, and uh, some things to, to come as well. That's it for this one. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts on anything that I've talked about here in the comments as well. Uh, always interested to hear from you. Make sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Check the link in the description, as always, for the Wizardly Enclave Discord. If you want to chat books, whether uh, these books, other books, really anything at all, it's a lot of fun. We'd love to have you. And, of course, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe. Mm -hmm.